My favorite movie from every year of my life. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a list of my favorite movie from every year that I've been alive. Now, for a small smidgen of time, I actually had another channel and I made this video on that channel, but I was just really timid. I just, for some reason, was talking very quietly. It's just hard for me to watch. I was gonna repost it on here, but I was like, might as well just reshoot it because it's hard for me to watch. The ones I like, not really are the ones that are objectively the best. They're just for the ones that for some reason I like. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. 1990, I'm gonna go with Goodfellas. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I've always really enjoyed Goodfellas. It's never been one that I've really wanted to revisit. A lot of people would hail it as better than the godfather especially the newer kids i've talked to you know younger guys and they say they couldn't even watch the godfather it was too slow and they watch uh, goodfellas and they said it was the best goodfellas it is iconic it is that martin scorsese classic i really really like it i just don't have that much of a personal like tie to it but it's a very very good movie goodfellas 1990. all right another one to where i just don't have a unique choice for this year and that is terminator 2. it's just such a great movie it's iconic it's probably one of the best movies of all time or rated as one of the best movies of all time normally to me i don't like super 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 popular movies and this movie is just through the roof popular i just didn't have anything else this year i really do enjoy it i just wish it was a little bit more personalized 1991 terminator 2. 1992 i feel like i'm saying this about every single year but it does get a lot more personalized later on and 1992 is reservoir dogs now i've seen reservoir dogs a number of years ago and i gotta be honest i don't think i'm gonna like it as much now on rewatch and i was desperately looking for something else to fit its place here but i just couldn't find it I've never seen Basic Instinct that came out this year. Um, when I was younger, my, my buddy was always talking about Encino Man. I've never seen that. Last of the Mohicans, I've heard that's really good and, and like super long. I've never seen that either. So there's a lot of movies I could have seen, but I'm gonna have to go with Reservoir Dogs. That's the only one that I know that I've seen that I like this year. Okay, 1993 is True Romance. Now this is a movie that I totally need to revisit because I only watched it once, but I absolutely loved it. Like I can say, definitively that I love this movie and um, as from what I remember it's just very very R-rated but it's kind of written in a way for all these chaotic things to happen but it's for the two main characters to get together in the end which I always really like and I just really really enjoy this movie of all the ones on this list that's the one I'd want to rewatch the most mainly because I've only seen it once but I loved it. 1994 a great year for movies so many good movies Dumb and Dumber is one of my favorite movies but I'm gonna have to go with Shawshank Redemption. It's hard for me not to say that Shawshank Redemption is the best movie of all time because it just is just perfect to me. The only thing I wish that it had that it doesn't have is a good romance story, but that's just being nitpicky, trying to find something wrong with it. I would probably say that Shawshank Redemption is my favorite movie. When I think of a good movie, that's what comes to mind. All right, guys, 1995, and there were some really good ones this year. Uh, my fa I'm a really big James Bond fan. GoldenEye came out this year, which is my favorite James Bond. Usual Suspects, if you've not seen the first scary movie and had that ending ruined, Usual Suspects is a fantastic movie. I love it, a brilliant ending, but I'm gonna have to go with Seven. Seven's just a masterpiece of destruction. It's just phenomenal. Um, I've rewatched the ending scene, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 times, sometimes in the morning, just because it's so intense and like wakes me up so much. Um, it's got that what's in the box, people make fun of it for that, but man, Seven, that's just a movie that everybody has to see. It's one of the few movies that ends on a really bad note that I really love, 1995, Seven. All right, guys, 1996, uh, this was pretty close. I really, really liked Primal Fear. I just saw it. It actually is very, very similar to Fight Club and really highly recommend Primal Fear to a lot of people, but I'm gonna have to go with Scream now. I just have a personal love with Scream. I love these movies. Each Scream is basically a mystery and I love mystery movies. There's so few mystery movies that are good and the mystery aspect is almost always on point with the Scream movies, and this was the first one. Absolutely love it, Scream 1996. All right, guys, 1997. Now, this was another muddy one. Uh, I remember seeing Donnie Brasco. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I actually have a soft spot in my heart for I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, but I just I just can't put it like as my number one. I just saw it, it's so corny, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna have to go with LA Confidential now. 
This is one that's rated super, super highly. It has a lot of A-list actors in it, actresses as well. But I don't know, I just feel like it kind of falls through in the last 20 or 30 minutes and becomes a little bit generic. I really do enjoy it, but it's not something I really want to rewatch. And objectively, it's pretty solid. It's not my favorite, but I'm gonna have to say it's my favorite for 1997. LA Confidential. All right, guys, 1998, and there's some pretty good ones here. I mean, Saving Private Ryan's a classic. How, how do you not pick that one? And I really like The Faculty, which is kind of like a, a retake on Stephen King's The Thing, but set in 1998. Really, really enjoyed The Faculty. And if you're on like a 90s kid, The Faculty is probably one of the most stacked cast movies that I've ever seen. There's just everybody's in that movie. But I'm gonna have to go with American History X. Um, this movie is just so intense. Uh, it pulls on your heartstrings so much. It's just kind of like this uh, tale of somebody going off the deep end and having his whole life ruined like by the end. And it's just so intense. And it was filmed in Venice Beach around 1998. And I used to live pretty close to that area. So I kind of have a little soft spot and like the end the ending scenes like shows the waves and all that kind of stuff. Um, Super, super intense, really gets under your skin, but it's just, man, what a movie it is. American History X, 1998. I just did a review on this one, 1999's Fight Club. Now, I absolutely love Fight Club. I think there was maybe a good nine months where I would just you know, get up and routinely watch this every day. Uh, I ended up losing a lot of weight and I'll kind of use this for inspiration. Absolutely love this movie beginning to end. Um, it's definitely a really challenging watch and it's definitely more towards the guys type of audience. Like I have seen women like it and it actually is really cool when they like Fight Club, but it's kind of a little bit more rare because it's very in your face and it kind of has a little bit of like a, a rough man growing up story in the background. So, but I still love it. 1999's Fight Club, so great. All right, guys, 2000. So normally I would have put Requiem for a Dream here, which is kind of like another masterpiece of destruction. Um, I ended up deciding to go with What Lies Beneath. Now, I actually just saw What Lies Beneath. I really do like it. It's not the best movie I've ever seen, but it has some really, really good acting in it. And it kind of has a lot of red herrings. You kind of don't even know where the story is going to go. It has something to do with paranormal activity, but it goes so much deeper than that at the end. So very, very good. Highly recommended. What Lies Beneath 2000. All right, guys, 2001 is training day. Now, this one, I don't think I would like it as much now, but I just absolutely love this movie. I think I saw this for the first time in like 2005, six ish. Uh, I talked to one of my buddies who I couldn't believe he liked movies, but he liked movies. Um, he told me a bunch that he liked. Training Day was one of them. Absolutely fell in love with Training Day. And again, I lived kind of by LA in this time period in 2001. So there's so much LA shots in it. I just absolutely love it. Pretty solid. Like I wouldn't say it's the best story ever, but it's very, very good, above average. Got Snoop Dogg in it. Very, I just absolutely love, absolutely love Training Day. And I do like movies that encompass like a full day beginning to end. And that's how this movie starts. All right, guys, 2002 is The Ring. Now, uh, again, this is kind of like a middle level horror movie. I, well, it's all like upper middle. I really do enjoy watching The Ring, but uh, I kind of prefer The Grudge to this one, but it's very, very solid. Just a kind of classic 2000s style horror. I'm pretty sure anybody in this time period has already seen it, but if you remember that time period and you want to check it out, go check it out. It's actually pretty solid. I would say upper middle horror, but surprisingly watchable. All right, guys, 2003, and this is kind of a toss up. It's hard for me to pick um, between House of a Thousand Corpses and Holes. I like them both, but just because I've had more recent experiences with House of a Thousand Corpses, I'm gonna go with this one. This is the only Rob Zombie film to me that feels like correct. You know, it has the vibe that I would expect from a Rob Zombie song transferred into film. A lot of the other ones he does are just, they're just dirty and dark and just like, cuss word, cuss word, cuss word, cuss word. And it's like, it's just, I don't know, like I like cussing, I like aggression, but it just doesn't work. You know what I mean? This one is crazy. It's it's psychotic and, and crazy, but at the same time, it's got this, this crazy hippie family vibe to it, to where it's not as dark as some of the other films. I just have always liked House of a Thousand Corpses. Not your typical style horror, but I love it. 
2003. All right, guys, 2004, so many good choices this year, but I'm gonna have to go with Anchorman. Probably my favorite Will Ferrell movie. Um, I've seen it countless times. I remember calling my friend and leaving him voicemails and things like that with quotes. Absolutely hilarious. I haven't seen it in a number of years, but I just remember this one just genuinely being hilarious. Number two wasn't as good, but it was still pretty solid, but I'm gonna have to go with 2004, Anchorman. All right, guys, 2005, I'm gonna have to go with Wedding Crashers. Now, Wedding Crashers, I absolutely love this movie too. It's probably my favorite Vince Vaughn movie. It's my favorite Owen Wilson movie. It's like the perfect time period that it comes out. It's got a nice cameo from Will Ferrell at the end. Um, it's just got a nice transition to it. It's, it starts off very funny and light in the beginning and then you see all the wedding crashing that that's all fun and then like just just the way that they meet the people and then they go over and then they get caught. It's just a nice hilarious hilarious movie like this is like again from all the people in this movie this is like them firing on all cylinders even a young bradley cooper in here hilarious love it wedding crashes 2005. all right guys 2006 and this is kind of like a toss-up between crank and running scared they're both these super aggressive way over the top films that i would only recommend to people who like aggressive over the top films and I'm gonna have to go with Crank today. I literally wrote down Running Scare, but I'm just gonna go with Crank. Crank's just an absolutely insane ride. I really don't recommend it to almost everybody. Um, it's about a guy who uh, like basically needs to do all this adrenaline activity to stay alive. And he basically just goes on a rampage and he's almost dying all the time. And he needs to do all these vices to kind of keep him awake because he's about to die. Crazy movie, don't recommend it to everybody, but for the right audience, it's crazy. Check it out. All right, guys, 2007 is the infamous 300. Now, this movie was all the talk for like a year, two or three. Suddenly, it kind of died down like by like 2015-ish. And I'll talk to like younger kids and like they didn't know anything about 300, but absolutely love this, one of this kind. I think the director, I forget his name, but this is like the only movie I like from him. And it's like an hour and 45 minutes and all of his other movies are like three hours and it's way too long, but absolutely love this movie. It made Gerard Butler um, just as like one of the very, probably start of, of next level action in movies. Absolutely love it, 300. All right guys, 2008 is Harold and Kumar 2. Now, I absolutely love the first Harold and Kumar. That was in the year of Anchorman. I had to give Anchorman just a slight edge, but Harold and Kumar 2, when I first saw it, I was a little bit disappointed just because I love Harold and Kumar so much, but this one truly is hilarious. The jokes are just nonstop. I remember I had a girl over at my house where we were just thinking like, man, I wanna put on something like truly funny, you know what I mean? And so I ended up putting this one on and I hadn't seen it in years. It was hilarious to me. It was hilarious to her. It was the perfect thing to put on. I don't think I could have put on anything any funnier. If you like, like stupid stoner jokes, comedy, kind of raunchy, but hilarious, check out Harold and Kumar too. Absolutely love it. All right guys, 2009, and again, I don't feel too strongly about this one, but there wasn't that many other options, and that is Inglorious Bastards. Hopefully they don't screw my video by saying that, but um, anyways, I remember watching it during like a really, really rough time, but this movie's just great. It's got so much iconics, you know, everything to it. Just the, the opening scenes, Brad Pitt, like carving the things in the foreheads, just, it's just a fantastic movie, like, probably not my favorite from him and like this isn't one that I'd want to revisit constantly um, but again for this year 2009 and glorious gotta say one of the best all right guys 2010 surprisingly stacked a lot of people would put inception but I didn't really I liked it but it just wasn't my favorites um, the, my favorites from 2010 are get them to the Greek insidious and the other guys and to be honest it comes between the other guys and Insidious, and I love both these movies, but I'm gonna have to inch it barely to Insidious because I have really long backstories with both of these movies. You know what I mean? Or like, a, I remember a specific point in time watching them and who I watched them with, but Insidious is just probably my favorite or one of my favorite haunted house movies ever. Um, yeah, rival up there with The Conjuring. If I was gonna put on, if I was gonna suggest to you one scary haunted house movie besides The Conjuring, it would be Insidious. One of my, probably in my top 50 favorite movies of all time. And you know, probably in my top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. I love Insidious. 
All right, guys, 2011 is Fast Five. Now, Fast Five, I had a lot of history with the original Fast and the Furious movies. I actually got into them once the first trilogy was complete. They were kind of old at that time. Absolutely loved them. My cousin's into cars. We would always quote all this stuff. Me and him still call each other cuh to this day. And that's from Too Fast, Too Furious. So had lots of backstories with these movies. Loved them. The fourth Fast and the Furious came out and you're like, oh, okay, it's nowhere near as good. You could just, it's going downhill. All of a sudden, Fast Five comes out and it's literally as perfect and as big as we can get. It's kind of funny, everyone's turning on the Fast franchise now. It was like, nobody liked it, everybody liked it, now nobody likes it again. And I gotta say, the new ones aren't that good, but Fast Five, literally perfect as far as Fast and the Furious. You couldn't do anything better. 2012, it comes between Sinister and Django Unchained, and I'm gonna have to slightly edge Django because it's even more iconic than Inglorious. Inglorious and Django are probably my favorite somewhat recent Tarantino movies. Um, for Tarantino, I think of 90s, Kill Bill, and then the ones he's made um, today. And I would say of the ones he's made today, this one's definitely up there. Completely iconic, really gets under people's skin, a well-made movie, and kind of turns everything on the head, giving you this great victory at the end. So Django Unchained, love it, 2012. All right, guys, 2013, I love both these movies, The Conjuring, Wolf of Wall Street, but I gotta go with the epic, iconic Wolf of Wall Street. Now, when this movie came out, I was kind of past, I don't wanna say like my more crazier phase of growing up. If you're going crazy, like this is the number one movie to watch. There's so many movies, even like Crank, where they're just trying to go as crazy as they possibly could go. And this one, it feels like they went a notch higher. I love it, Wolf of Wall Street. So iconic, a millions of iconic scenes, love it. Very vulgar, but it's great. All right guys, 2004, and I wanted to find something else besides this one, but I gotta go with Whiplash. Whiplash is a very, very good movie, very intense, it gets under your skin. For some reason, it doesn't make me want to rewatch it as much as other movies that get under my skin, but very, very intense, uh, will wake you up, kind of gets you thinking. If you're looking for something to get under your skin, very, very intense, Whiplash, check it out. All right, guys, 2015, I really don't have too many good uh, options this year. It was between The Visit, which is kind of like a M. Night Shyamalan, kind of like weird movie with one twist. That's very solid. And then you have The Revenant, which is this long, drawn-out movie, Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, and it's film to look like it's in one take but it's very slow and arduous it's very good but it's not one that i want to rewatch. although i probably edge the revenants slightly over the visit for this year 2015. okay 2016 is deadpool now as soon as i saw deadpool i was like this movie is so perfect and everybody and their mama liked it and I knew as soon as they're gonna come out with Deadpool 2, they're just gonna destroy it because it had so much popularity. Everybody's gonna see it and they're gonna jam so much extra crap into it by the end that it's gonna suck, and it did. But Deadpool 1 is iconic and perfect. I think I've only seen it one, two, three times, but wow. Like this is probably in my top five favorite superhero movies. It just, I remember watching it, it's just peak perfect Ryan Reynolds, love Deadpool. To me, he was Van Wilder, but after this movie, he became Deadpool. 2017 is John Wick Chapter 2. Now, I like all the John Wick movies. I feel like the first one was perfectly grounded, but then once you get to two and three, they step it up to like this crazy next level that's hard not to like that. And it's just a nice, easy to watch kind of movie for the guys. Something to just put on. Guys just beating everybody up, you know, he gets screwed. Like, he's super nice, doesn't do anything to anybody, they screw him over, he gets revenge. The classic John Wick story. Works out very good here, 2017. All right guys, 2018, I'm gonna have to go with Upgrade. Now, Upgrade is a very, very solid movie. In one sense, it's a little bit simple, but it's just very, very well done. It's kind of this movie that has this big twist that you don't really know till the end. And it's kind of low budget, but at the same time, it's very believable. It's about um, like this guy who gets like this computer put in his body and he could like give control of the body to the computer and the computer could just beat up whoever basically. And they make it really realistic. So really, really like Upgrade. If you want something simple, intense, not the most complex story, but, but good enough, Upgrade 2018, loved it. 
All right, guys, 2019. Now, I normally would go with Dr. Sleep because I absolutely love Dr. Sleep, and it's hard for me to say that anything could beat it, but by a hair, I'm gonna have to go with Infinity War by the Avengers. And I know it's super cliche to say that, but for me, I watched, I watched all three Thors, and then I watched Infinity War and Endgame. And I gotta say, by the time I watched all three Thors and I watched Infinity War, I gotta say that that was the best, most well put together superhero movie that I've ever seen. And I don't think it could ever be recreated just simply because you have all these individual stars from individual movies that you bring into this. It works perfectly. Like it could almost never work this good again. It's perfect to me. The only thing that I wish is that they beat Thanos at the end and that you have a little bit more of Thor with the ax. But to me, this is a perfect superhero movie. I loved it. And it made me wanna watch all the other MCU movies when I literally didn't wanna watch them because I didn't like popular movies. But this movie, amazing, and I hate it in game. So that's just me. All right, guys, 2020, I'm gonna have to go with Invisible Man. Now this one's just a very, very solid, pretty simple horror movie, but uh, I think it's directed by Lee Whannell, who worked alongside James Wan. Now, James Wan is a notoriously good director. He directed Insidious, he directed Saw, he ended up going even over to Aquaman. So he understands all the horror stuff and the scary stuff. I really, really enjoyed Invisible Man. Like, it's one of those ones that's not overly complex, but for just a simple linear story, very, very, very good. Completely enjoyed it, and I want to see more from this guy for sure. All right, guys, 2021 is No Time to Die. Now, I loved No Time to Die. Like, No Time to Die blew me away so much because I had watched all the Daniel Craig, James Bond movies, and they all just had something about them that I really, really didn't like, that took me away from things. And this movie, more than even a James Bond movie, it's just an amazing, amazing movie. The last scene, like I've rewatched it five to 10 times, it pulls on your heartstrings so much. The main scenes that are intense is between him and his girl, I forget her name, and she's the one who really sells all the acting, but I loved No Time to Die, absolutely fantastic. I didn't write one down for this year. I haven't seen too, too many that have come out this year, but I will go ahead and put one on screen if I come out with one that I want to put out for this year, but this year is not done yet, so I'm kind of going to wait till the end. But if I find one that I want to put for 2022, I'll put it up. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this list. Let me know if you want me to check out any other movies from any other years. I'll be very interested to see. It's been a very fun list. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Definitely tell me your favorite picks down below. I can't wait to hear them. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. Have a great day out here. Hopefully you're having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.